Hello everyone, I am CS Surbhi Punshi, Indac Tech Expert at ClearTech. And in this video, we are going to understand about GSTR 9 for FY 2021. And I am saying FY 2021, which means from 1st April 2020 till 31st March 2021. First, coming to what exactly is this GSTR 9? So, it's an annual return which needs to be filed yearly by a taxpayer who are registered under GST. So whenever I am saying taxpayer, which is a registered taxpayer, here they are registered as a regular taxpayer. So if they are registered as a regular taxpayer, then they are required to file this GSTR 9 on yearly basis. So which means who are not covered over here? So if we are a casual taxable person or we are an ISD or if we are a non-resident uh, taxable person, or if we are an e-commerce operator who is filing GSTR 8 or we are a tax deductor under section 51 or we have opted for a composition scheme, in all such cases we are not required to file this GSTR 9. So in short, if you are registered as a regular taxpayer under GST, in that particular case you are required to file GSTR 9. But wait here, there is an exemption which has been given to people when we talk about FY 2021. So the exemption over here is that if your turnover is up to 2 crore, in that particular case, this GSTR 9 is optional for you. So in case you want to file, you can still go ahead and file, but it's optional for you, which means if your turnover is more than 2 crore, only then you are required to mandatory file the GSTR 9 form, which is an annual return. Right? So this is the part about applicability of GSTR 9. Now the second important part is about the due date. So this GSTR 9 has to be filed by 31st December 2021. So when we talk about FY 2021, the due date for filing GSTR 9 is 31st December 2021 unless the government further extends this date. So till now if we talk about the due date is 31st December 2021. Coming about, can we actually revise the GSTR 9? So the answer over here is no. Once you have filed your GSTR 9, then you cannot revise this return. The other part is, what if I don't even file my GSTR 9? So if it is optional for you, then there is no question of late fees. But if it is mandatory for you and you have not filed your GSTR 9, in that particular case, there is a late fees here. And the late fees over here is 200 rupees per day. So 200 rupees per day you have to pay the uh, late fees subject to the maximum amount of a quarter which is 0.50 of a turnover in a state or a taxable territory. Right? When I am saying state, obviously it also contains your IGST or CGST or HGST. All of that will be included over here. Right? So this was about the penalty in case you don't file your GSTR 9 on time. Now the next important part which is the most important part is how to file this GSTR 9 or how to even prepare this GSTR 9 because this GSTR 9 contains lot of sections so we should actually first understand about the sections which are there in GSTR 9 and then we will divide that into different parts so that it is easy for us to even fill this GSTR 9 because today if we just talk about GSTR 9 we usually get confused I have my GSTR 1, I have my GSTR 3B, I have my books of account should I just go ahead and file my GSTR 9 basis the GSTR 1 or should I just go ahead and file basis 3B or should I just look into my books of account or a financial statement and file my GSTR 9? So that's always a question mark, right? So here we will actually understand that how you are going to file your GSTR 9. So today if we just look into all of the sections or all of the parts which are there in GSTR 9, so there are total 6 parts, right? First part which just contains the basic detail. Then there is a second part which talks about the detail of outward supplies and the inward supply which is liable to RCM which talks about actually liability which you have to pay or discharge. Then there is th third part which talks about detail of ITC and its reversal. Then there is a fourth part which talks about detail of taxes which you have paid. Then there is a part five which talks about certain amendments or additions which you have done in the next year but related to the current financial year. And then there is part 6 which talks about other informations like demands or maybe refunds. So all of such information are there in your part 6. Right. So now we are actually going to divide all of this part or all of this table into 3 parts. So 
so that we are able to fill this gs10 line in a easy way so the, we don't get complicated because sometimes we get lot of confusion when especially when there is a differences between one freebie or my books of account so here we will just divide this into three parts our first part which is an important part is liability and the taxes pay so we will just categorize all the table which is liability related to liability and taxes paid at a, as a one category then we'll make a second category as an itc and reversal and then third is our other section right so first one is the liability and the taxes paid so our table number 4 5 9 10 11 11 and 14 these are the sections which are related to liability and the taxes paid then the second part was itc and its reversal so here our table number 6 7 8 12 and 13 will have the information in relation to itc the input tax credit which i have claimed and certain reversals which i have done then there are other sections like 1 2 3 or maybe our sections like 15 17 18 19 that will form part of your as a other sections like demand refund job worker and all of such information right now let's focus on the first important category which was liability and taxes paid so liability and taxes paid had table number 4 5 9 10 11 and 14 so here one part or one important thing which we should always understand is whenever we are preparing the gs10 9 for fy 2021 i am going to refer it as a current year right whenever i am saying current year which means it is april 2020 till 31st march 2021 right that is what you have to understand so all the liability which was related to fy 2021 needs to be mentioned in the gs10 9 for fy 2021 so if there was some liability which was related to previous year but was paid in the current year gs10 3b that will not form part of your gs10 9 for fy 2021 so when i am saying current year which means i am referring to fy 2021 whenever i am saying previous year which means i am referring to fy 1920 and whenever i am saying future year assume that i am always referring to fy 21 22 so that is what you should understand whenever i am making a reference for this three financial year right so here all my liability and again when i am saying liability first let's assume about only outward supply i am not talking about inward supply which was liable to rcm all my outward supply all my sales which is related to fy 9 uh, fy 2021 which means my current year has to be reported in gst 9 of fy uh, 2021 which is the same financial year right now there would be cases where you have actually not discharge your liability so there was a liability as per your books of account for the current financial year but you have not declared that in, that in your gst 1 or 3b so that liability will also form part of your gst 9 for the current financial year similarly if you had certain liability which was related to previous year but you have shown in the current financial year in 3b or gst 1 that liability will not form part of your fy 2021 which is our current financial year right similarly if there are some liability which was related to current year but you have shown in the future year that will again form part of your gst 9 because that liability is related to your current year you are getting what i mean to say in short if i just say all the liability which was related to your current year will be declared in your gst 9 for the current year now coming to how we are going to divide this into different section so there is table number 4 and 5 and also there is table number 9 and then there is table number 10 and 11 all the liability which was related to your current year and you have also paid or discharged that liability in your gst 3b for the current year will form or will sit in your table number 4 and 5 similarly all the liability which was related to current year and you have not paid till now will also form part of your table 4 and 5 right in short your table number 4 and 5 contains all liability related to current year and shown in your gst 3b for the current year plus all the liability which is related to the current year as not paid till now 
in your gstr 3b that will form part of your table number 4 and 5 then the second part is all the liability which is related to the current year but has been shown in your gstr 3b for the next fy that will information will be shown in your table number 10 right in the same way if you had certain liability or you have extra reported something in your gstr 3b but has reversed that particular amount in the next fy that will form part of your table number 11 right so this part is clear so we are in short saying all liability related to current year and also discharge in the current year will form part of your table number 4 and 5 all liability which was related to current year and has not paid till now has to be reported in table number 4 and 5 all liability related to current year but has been discharged in the next year will be reported in table number 10 and 11 if you are increasing liability then 10 if you are decreasing the liability then your table number 11 so that is how the liability part has to be shown so accordingly when we look into table number uh, when we especially look into table number 9 which talks about taxes paid taxes paid there you must see that there are two table one is tax payable and another is the taxes paid so taxes paid is auto filled by the government and that is auto filled basis your gstr 3b for the current financial year that is how they were and which is not an editable thing so here tax payable you have to make sure the tax payable amount is coming as per the amount which you have shown in your table number 4 so that is the one thing you have to do because if you had reported some liability in table number 4 which have never declared in your gstr 3b then here in table number 9 also you have to increase the corresponding tax payable amount right so that is what you have to do so this is how you have to report your table number 4 5 10 11 and table number 9 right sometime you will see a discrepancy between the tax payable and the paid but that is okay you don't have to worry about it the difference is you can always pay through your drc 03 or there could be a second reason of difference is because the taxes paid may also contain the liability which you have paid for the previous year that amount could also be there in the taxes paid when we talk about table number 9 but again you don't have to worry about because when you look into your previous year table number 10 and 11 all of this will automatically get get matched so you don't have to worry about let it be there or difference because you can anyhow look into your previous year gst 9 there you have would have already reported this information in table number 10 so when you reconcile that with that all this information will actually get matched now coming to our next important part which is related to itc and itc reversal so for itc and itc reversal we have table number 6 we have table number 7 then we have table number 8 12 and 13 right so when we just talk about all of this table especially when i'm talking over let's say table number 6 so table number 6 actually talks about the entire itc right in table number 6 also if we just look into it we have table 6a which has the information in respect of the itc which you have claimed in gstr 3b right here you have to be uh, like you have to make sure whenever i'm talking about this especially when i'm preparing gst 9 for fy 2021 which is current financial year in that particular case we have to see the itc which i have claimed in my current return period right like which means which was the eligible itc as per me right because sometimes you would say ki okay there was an itc related to march but actually it was not an eligible itc and all that so you don't have to worry about that part so now when you look into your 6a right 6a will have the information in respect of the itc which have claimed in 3b so in the other session which is again not editable at all so while you are filling information from 6b to 6h you have to make sure that is nothing but just a break up of the itc which you have claimed in table number 6a right so that is one of the important part we should understand that uh, whatever information in 6a you have declared the break up of that has to be declared in the other sections of table number 6 then there is table number uh, like especially table number 7 whatever the itc reversals you have declared in your gstr 3b that itc reversal has to be shown in your table number 7 right then there is table number 8 so table number 8 in 8a you will see that there is an itc which has been populated as per 2a so that is again fixed which is auto computed so you cannot edit it then there is table number 8b 8b will actually give you information in respect of itc which has been already declared or claimed in your gstr 3b in respect of the supplies from a registered dealer so that will be auto populated here 
in table number 6c you have to declare that particular itc which was related to your current financial year but has been claimed in your next financial year so if that's the case then that particular itc will, will flow and sit in your table number 8c right and if there is certain itc which was ineligible then you can always declare that information in table number 8f and if there was certain itc which you have not claimed and you are not going to claim that that itc you are going to show in table number 8e right so that is how we are going to show all this information now question comes in what if you there was some itc you have extra claim but at a later stage you have reversed that itc right that could also be a case that you have extra claim but you have reversed that itc in the next financial year because if it is done in the same financial year you don't have to worry about it that will flow and sit in table number 7 itself but what if it has been reversed in the next financial year if that's the case then you have to report that information in your table number 12 and similarly if there was an itc related to your current financial year but you have claimed in the next financial year then again that information has to be shown in your table number 13 so this is how you are required to report the itc information and the last part is just our other section and other sections you don't have to worry about because most of the other information is optional when we talk about fy 2021 so this was all about our gstr 9 for fy 2021 and that is how we have to fill the information in respect of the liability and the itc in our gstr 9 and in case still you have certain doubt you can always put your comment over there so that we can resolve your query and you can even reach out to our support team at gst support at the rate clear text dot in hope you like this video and most of your doubts are clear but still if you have doubt you can always uh, comment on the chat box thank you thank you very much